was to postpone the elections, hoping that the pandemic would soon loosen its grip and they'll be able to conduct their elections in a more conducive environment. More than 70 countries postponed the elections. However, as the days and months passed and the COVID does not really show any sign of abating and went on unpredictable curves and trajectories going up one day, going down, slightly down and then very up another day, it was realized that some way would have to be found to balance the democratic rights of the citizen, of the electorate, to choose their representatives, while also making a very sincere effort and systematic effort to protect the health and safety of the people. Consequently, many countries have started to venture and took the courageous decision to go ahead with the elections in their election schedules, making adjustments and adherence to the new safety norms. ECI traded safely but firmly and started by conducting elections to 18 seats of Rajya Sabha as well as some MLC elections. As you are aware, elections of Rajya Sabha are indirect, but they involve around 984 eligible electors across eight states of the country. Stringent health and safety protocols were in force during this election. After the successful conduct of these elections, amid COVID crisis, ECI had all along been doing kind of parallel exercise on what to do about Bihar and what to do about the by-elections in a couple of state assemblies. <clears throat> and these were quite meticulous pre preparations of which to which I'll allude to in a while. So today, friends, we are here. The commission is here to, before you, to announce the elections to the largest assembly of, the, of one of the largest states of India, which is Bihar. I think if you see the relative statistics, it would probably be as a very senior friend from media said in the morning, the biggest election in the, in the world, in the COVID times, in the immediate future. <laughs> You're all aware that the term of assembly in Bihar is due to expire on 29th November. Bihar assembly has a strength of 243 members of whom 38 seats are reserved for SCs and two for STs. COVID-19 exigencies and social distancing measures made the commission revisit the ex extend instructions. One of the first major steps which was taken uh, was to reduce the maximum number of electors at the polling station from 1,500 to 1,000. I am sure you will kindly appreciate the magnitude of this revision because the number of polling stations as a result of this decision went up from 65,337 in the year 2015, the year of last, and to more than 1 lakh in 2020. This massive increase in the number of polling stations entails huge logistic and manpower implications. <clears throat> the special summary revision of the electoral rules of Bihar was held with reference to AK Dozar B's as a qualifying date, and the final rule was published on February 7, 2020. 
the total electors in Bihar during 2015, when the last assembly elections were conducted, was 67 million. In 2022, now as we are sitting to brace for the polls, the number is about 7.29 crore. That is 72 million. Male electors in 2015 were 3.57 crore, which has now risen to 3.85 crore. Number of female electors was 3.12 crore in 2015, and now it is 3.4 crore. The number of service electors rose from 92,144 to 1.6 lakhs. As soon as Deployment of EVMs, etc., is concerned the main tool of elections. 1.89 lakh BUs, 1.41 lakh CUs, and 1.73 lakh VPATs are being deployed in Bihar. To give you further glimpse of the magnitude of logistics to conduct elections during COVID, as per report received from CEO Bihar, incidentally, we all have had a series of interactions with the CEO and other officials of Bihar on a virtual basis, on which I'll come to in some more detail later. More than 7 lakh units of hand sanitizers, about 46 lakh masks, about 6 lakh PPE kits, 7.6 lakh units of face sheets, and about 23 lakh hand gloves have been arranged. For the voters, that is 77.2 crore single use hand gloves have been specifically arranged when they press the EVM, etc. As per reports received from the field units and collated by CEO Bihar, there were about 18.8. 87 lakh migrants across 38 districts of Bihar. Out of these, 16.6 lakh were eligible to vote, being more than 18 years. 13.93 lakh had their names already on the rolls. During the process of continuous updation, 2.3 lakh voters were registered, and the process of updation is still on. I would take this opportunity to compliment CEO Bihar, the district election officers there, and the election machinery at the district and sub-district level, that they made assiduous efforts to connect with so many migrant workers in the process of registration. Now I come to some special, some more special measures for. COVID-19 safe elections. Elections usually involve large gatherings, not only on election day itself, but during campaigns, nominations, and other practices. These events increase human-to-human -human contact and the risk of direct and indirect disease transmission. The Commission has therefore taken the following steps to mitigate the risk and ensure safe elections. One of the significant ways uh, in which the health impact of COVID-19 can be mitigated is by exploring options to in-person voting for certain vulnerable categories of people. You would recall that way back in October 2019, that is pre-COVID times, on the recommendations of the Commission, the concept of absentee voters was introduced and it was used very effectively in Delhi at that time, after that. In the elections in Bihar, postal ballot facility has been extended as an option to senior citizens aged, aged 80 and above. We were wanting to extend it to people from 65 and above. Political parties had their own views, but ultimately what clinched the argument of not going for that this time is that because of the increase in the number of polling stations, already our manpower requirements had increased so significantly that we realized we may not be able to manage the 65 part. So it remains 80 years. Persons with disability, back in the electoral roll, 
and COVID-19 suspect or affected persons, uh, all shall be taken care of. And in that we are following regarding the COVID-19, even in Rajya Sabha, one or two MLAs who were suspected, they had to vote, cast their votes at the very end after everybody else had gone through the voting process. Special protocol has been, uh, there's also a facility of postal ballots wherever required or wherever asked for. We'll also be especially, uh, deploying a lot of teams to ensure this process as have been deployed and that we get a lot of cooperation. I'm wanting to tell you that we get a lot of cooperation from civil society we have been getting in the past and I'm sure we'll get now also. Special protocol has been devised for electors who are COVID positive, suspect, quarantine, so that such citizens are able to exercise their franchise without in any way jeopardizing the health of other voters. COVID-19 patients who are quarantined will be able to cast their vote at the last day of the hour, whole day, at their respective polling stations, as I said earlier, under the supervision of health authorities, strictly following the laid down by years. This is besides the option of postal facility already extended to them. Nodal health officers will also be appointed at the state district level to oversee COVID-19 related arrangements and preventing bias during the entire electoral process. In order to further decongest polling spaces and allow more free movement of the voters, polling time has been increased. Polling time has been increased by one hour. Polling will now be held from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m instead of 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. earlier. However, this will not be applicable to the left-wing affected areas. Nomination form and affidavit can now be filled, filled up online and print out submitted to RO. Offline is also allowed, but online is also been introduced. Besides security, besides all this, security money can also be deposited through online mode. Candidates can also seek electoral certification digitally. The number of persons accompanying a candidate for submission of nomination has been restricted to two. I repeat two. And the number of vehicles shall be restricted to two. I repeat two. Door-to-door -door campaigning has been restricted to five persons, including the candidate. Road shows are allowed, subject to the convoy being broken after every five vehicles. All election meetings and gatherings will have to adhere strictly to the health and safety protocols and shall be monitored at all levels by the election and health machinery in the field in the various districts of Bihar. I want to dispel doubts, friends, that all physical contact has been prohibited in election meetings and campaigning. In fact, the very fact that instead of talking to each other virtually today, we may not be accommodated, all of you, but we still have made an effort to at least talk in person is, all, is an indication from the side of election commission that all this propaganda going on in certain sections, that only virtual campaigning will happen, et cetera, et cetera, has not been, has been quite widely off the mark. Yes, we have stated that the number of people who can be congested a certain, who can congregate at a certain place has been limited. The DEOs shall identify dedicated grounds in advance where public gatherings can take place with social distancing norms clearly marked to ensure the safety of the attendance. I must report to you that already this exercise has been completed by DUs. In fact, even within the commission now, we have a list of such grounds available district-wise, although this is not for commission to kind of take any kind of day-to-day -day call on this, it is for the CEO and the district magistrates. 
but we have got all the information. And the DEOs have been instructed to kind of already do the circling, etc., as per the COVID norms. That has been done by the CEO of Bihar. The committee of officers was set up at the commission to chalk, chalk out broad guidelines for conducting elections amid COVID. This committee was chaired by Shri Umesh Sina, Secretary General. And it had various stakeholders, many of them contacted virtually. Uh, and they had detailed deliberations with the chief electoral officers of various states to use this just to have a feedback or various suggestions and inputs. The commission also took inputs of political parties. They were initially given some time, they wanted some more time, which was extended as they desired. And the commission had a feedback from all the political parties with us, considering all the relevant factors and circumstances and keeping in view the safety norms specified by MHA, broad and detailed guidelines were issued by the commission for the conduct of elections and by-elections during sometime in August 2020. These guidelines have already been adopted to government of Bihar and these guidelines are available on the ECI website and I think made available to most of you uh, from Bayashifaliji. Based on these broad guidelines, CEO Bihar was asked to prepare comprehensive plans at the state, district, constituency and booth level, considering the local conditions and COVID conditions and COVID situation. And these guidelines established standard protocols of sanitization, wearing of masks, use of gloves, thermal scanners, and social distancing throughout the gamut of election activities. As the gradual and phased lockout unlock has been initiated in various parts of the country, several meetings were held, as I said earlier, at the level of Secretary General ECI Shri Umesh Sina and our, all other colleagues from ECI and officers of commission with officials from MHA, railways, central agencies, regarding security forces, strategic and communication measures to be put in place. I am happy to report to you that we are getting fullest cooperation from all these agencies. And I am sure like they do it always, they will give us their cooperation this time also, which they are already extending. The Commission has conducted several rounds of video conferences with the election machinery. A team of two officers, namely Sri Chandra Bhushan, who is in charge of uh, Bihar in the uh, Election Commission, and Sri Sudeep Jain, who looks after the EVM, they were in Bihar on 14th and 15th September, and they have done extensive review of the situation on the ground by holding more than one meetings in Patna, as well as in some selected divisional headquarters. They have reported that all necessary preparations have been made and the infrastructure of conduct of elections is well, is well in place. Commission, as you are aware, has always been very sensitive to the persons with disability and senior citizens. We started this process way back in 1718 by having a conference in Rajasthan, then a national level conference in Delhi. And after that, we have been trying to uh, kind of upgrade and try to do various things required for that. One of our leading consultants in this based out of Bangalore, she herself is disabled, but at the same time, she's so very meticulous in terms of making suggestions and uh, kind of more scientific innovations, which keeps Sri Umesh Sina and his team busy. Persons with disability, the first thing Commission has been insisting is that all polling stations should be located on the ground floor. Persons with disability would also be tagged to their respective polling stations and message arrangement made for their comfortable and convenient experience on polling day. 
assistance of volunteers, priority voting, wheelchair, and proper transport facilities shall be made available. They will be provided with a free pass on public transport on the poll day. The third meeting of the National Advisory Committee on Accessible Elections was organized recently through online mode in order to hone up and firm up our strategic action plans on accessible elections and to review preparations on accessibility front in front uh, accessibility front ahead of the R assembly elections the commission guarantees assured minimum facility which you're all aware at each polling station including drinking water toilets waiting area and ramps additionally polling stations will now be infused with sanitizers masks soap and water for rinsing and other necessary equipment to handle any health emergency. Volunteers will be deployed to assist PWD voters, senior citizens, and COVID affected areas, as I already said. All necessary and administrative and security protocols have been put in place for EVMs and VPATs, including randomization, FLC, movement and storage protocols, and multi layer security cover the etpbs facility will be offered to our service voters as we talk the mcc stands enforced uh, with this announcement the commission has already made elaborate arrangements for ensuring the effective implementation of mcc guidelines <clears throat> you're also aware that Honorable Supreme Court, a lot of uh, uh, very vigilant citizen groups and the commission itself have been very particular about this issue of criminal antecedents. Criminal candidates with criminal antecedents are required to publish information in this regard in newspapers and TV channels on three occasions during the campaign period. Now it's also mandatory for political parties to upload on their website detailed information regarding individuals with pending criminal cases selected as candidates along with reasons for such selection and also why other individuals without criminal antecedents could not be selected. The commission had issued a circular. I'm sure you have all gone through it very thoroughly on 11 September 2025, clarifying the earlier guidelines and updating them further. <clears throat> the Commission has a multi-pronged, multifaceted, comprehensive strategy for curbing the use of money power elections through an elaborate mechanism of SSTs, FSTs and expenditure accounting. Our friends in media are also aware that we have been appointing in the last few elections wherever required, only where required and need-based special expenditure of those. Depending on the inputs on the field, which you already have in plenty, we shall be doing the same this time in Bihar elections, as well as if required in the by-elections to the states. Media has always been a very important ally for the Commission by virtue of its very proactive and positive engagement and with the electoral process and reaching out to the voter through the length and breadth of the country. Media personnel covering election activities would be requested to follow all the extant guidelines issued by the Commission and the various state governments the Bihar state government in case of by-elections, various state governments. Adverse use of social media platforms has emerged as a new challenge in the recent times. As such, it is necessary that persons or organizations using or misusing social media or similar digital platforms are dealt with sternly and kept at bay. The Commission would like to make it emphatically clear 
that anyone who makes mischievous use of social media, for example, trying to foment communal tensions, etc., for electoral purpose, shall have to face the consequences under the law of the land. You're also aware that in the run-up to the Lok Sabha elections, a group of our officers had engaged with the media platforms and their uh, association, and they had submitted a voluntary code of ethics to the ECI by their platforms, which most of them observed quite scrupulously. The social media platforms are expected to make adequate arrangements to safeguard against misuse of their platforms and set up strict protocols to handle such issues as and when they arise. If such arrangements are not made by them and they would not be allowed to take the pretext of being only the providers of platform and shall be held responsible if necessary action is not taken by them promptly and adequately. So, besides, Commission has also entreating the political parties and candidates to sensitize their representatives not to indulge in malpractices, malicious propaganda, hate speech, or fake news, as such acts shall be dealt with sternly, harshly by the Commission. We will be closely monitoring such activities and such posts and shall take action appropriately. You know that Commission has a full-fledged sweep division and this time the emphasis shall be on safe elections and COVID-19 safety awareness programs beside increasing voter turnout and ethical as well as informed decision making of the voters. Comprehensive use of print media, electronic media, radio, digital, digital media, and traditional outreach methods of voter awareness are being taken up to inform, facilitate, and motivate voters. With all comprehensive arrangements made at the polling station, we hope that people the ultimate arbiters in the democracy shall participate with full enthusiasm and the voter turnout will be more than the previous elections. The commission as always will deploy sufficient number of general police and expenditure observers in order to keep a close watch at every stage of the election process and ensure a free and fair elections in every sense of the term. If required, as I said earlier, special observers will be also be deployed for expenditure monitoring and any other law and order contingency, etc. The Commission has tried to harmonize the integrating, uh, integrating cutting edge technology in our election processes for the last five, six years. And that process is an ongoing process. Applications like Booth App and C Vigil have simplified procedures, made data available at the click of a button, and connected ECI to every stakeholder through their mobile services. Before I finally move on to announce the schedule for Bihar Assembly elections, I would like to tell you that the Commission took various factors into consideration while deciding the election schedule. Elections entail large-scale deployment and movement of security forces from various parts of the country, and we try to minimize their movement over long distances. This is both to reduce their body fatigue as well as to kind of reduce the travel time, etc., and make them feel fresh after a day or two of rest for the election duties. The prevailing COVID situation and since necessity of social distancing was also kept in mind. Care was taken that the period of elections is not unnecessarily prolonged. 
Hence, we have shortened the period of conduct of elections and reduced the number of phases. The number of security forces has been increased many fold to ensure peaceful elections. Another factor which has been taken into consideration was the upcoming festival season uh, and convenience of our people. As far as the by-elections to the state assemblies are concerned, you see, we have received representations from CEOs and CEOs, chief secretaries and CEOs of at least three, four states, if not more, on various grounds, seeking some government in their by-elections. <clears throat> so commission has kept a special meeting on the coming Tuesday, that is 29th of September, only to consider those representations after which Shri Umer Sina shall issue the press release of by-elections. The schedule for elections for the Legislative Council of Bihar and Karnataka, teacher and graduate segments, which were deferred by the Commission earlier due to the unforeseen situation of public health emergency, etc., from on 8th June 20, shall also be announced today in a separate press release by Sri Zarmendar and Sri Umesina. This will cover four teacher and four graduate constituencies in Bihar. Karnataka elections will be held for two graduate and two teachers constituencies. One MLC uh, election of deferred Nizamabad uh, constituency will also be announced for which all except the actual poll, all other electoral steps uh, have been already concluded at the time of deferment will be announced today afternoon along with the other by-elections for the teachers and graduates. <coughs> so I think now I would like to read out the statement for which you have been sitting here. <coughs> and uh, I thank you for your patience. <coughs> General elections to the Legislative Assembly of Bihar shall be conducted in three phases. In first phase, 71 assembly constituencies in 16 districts, including most of the LWE districts, will go for poll. It will be held in approximately 31,000 polling stations. In second phase, 94 assembly constituencies in 17 districts will go for poll. It will have approximately 42,000 polling stations. All this is going to be made digitally available to you in the next half an hour, if not more. Sorry? General elections to the Legislative Assembly of Bihar will be conducted in three phase elections. Is it clear? Neeraj, do you it's clear? In first phase, 71 assembly, election, uh, 71 assembly constituencies in 16 districts, including most of the LWE districts, will go for poll. It will be held in approximately 31,000 polling stations. Am I clear? Can I go next? In, that I'll come to. That I'll come to. That I'll come to. I'm keeping some suspense. I want you to, no, this is a part of the point. I want you to, I want you to stay with us for some more time. <laughs> in second phase, 94 assembly constituencies in 17 districts will go for poll. It will have approximately 42,000 polling stations. In third phase, 78 assembly constituencies in 15 districts will go for poll. It will have approximately 15 districts, third phase, 78 assembly constituencies in 15 districts will go for poll. It will have approximately 33.5 thousand polling stations. 10 districts will have two phases of elections for logistical reasons. 28 districts will have single phase elections. 
But man, and Bagalpur districts will have elections in the first as well as second phase. Eight districts, namely Darbhanga, Madhubani, Urba, Urba Champaran, Paschim Champaran, Muzaffarpur, Vaishali, Samastipur, and Sita Madhi will have elections in second and third phases. Eight districts, namely Darbhanga, Madhubani, Urba Champaran, Paschim Champaran, Muzaffarpur, Vaishali, Samastipur, and Sita Madhi will have elections in second and third phases. So now, without further, I mean, issue of notification, first phase, first October. Am I clear? Last date of nomination, now I am reading only first phase, right? When I start, come to second phase, I will mention that. First phase, issue of notification, 1st October. Last date of notification, 8th October. Is it right? Scrutiny of nominations, 9th October. Is it clear? Last date of withdrawal of candidature, 12th October. Date of poll, 28th October. Counting of votes, 10th November, but that will be for all the phases, right? With your permission, 10th November. Can I now go to second phase, please? You there? Okay. Issue of notification, 9th October. Last date of nomination, 16th October. Whenever you want me to repeat, I'll repeat, gladly repeat. Scrutiny of nomination, 17th October. Last date of withdrawal of candidature, 19th October. Date of poll, 3rd November. Counting, as I said earlier, 10th November. Shall I go to third phase, please? Sorry? Shall I go to third phase? Issue of notification, 13th October. 13th, 13th October, Tera. Tera October. Last date of nomination, 20th October, 20th October. Scrutiny of nomination, 21st October, 21st October. Last date of withdrawal of candidature, 23rd October, 23rd October. Date of poll, 7th November, 7th November. Counting of votes, 10th November. Now, I would throw the floor open for... Can you have your questions, please announce your name and organization before you... Only, one request, one, please. only request is one by one, please. Sure. sure. Just a minute, we'll begin with this. Sir, Mohit Dubey, News Nation, say Bulram. सर जहां तक बिहार विधानसभा चुनाव की बात है आपने कहा कि ऐतिहासिक ये चुनाव होने जा रहा है कोरोना महामारी के दौरान अगर हम आपने जो उत्तरी बिहार के बारे में बात की पूर्वी चंपारण पश्चिमी चंपारण वैशाली दरभंगा जितने भी जिले हैं बाढ़ प्रभावित ये इलाके हैं सर आपको नहीं लगता था Thank you.